concert. They're here at the cast and crew of XY, which premiered which night at the Tribeca Film Festival? I saw the screening last night. That was the second screening? Yeah, it was the second screening. Second um, screening. It premiered on uh, Saturday night. Saturday? Yeah. How'd that go? It was fantastic. I mean, you know, when you make a movie, you're kind of in a little bit of an incubator. And we didn't do any test screenings beforehand, so I was very curious to see how people were going to respond to it. And the funny thing is, is, you know, people laughed so much more than I thought they would, which was great because when you're in your own edit room, the, 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 the funny moments become so old and stale. And to have it, see it in front of an audience for a first time and to have it become alive and be its own thing, it was really incredible. Yeah. So who here has actually seen the film? Okay, so we have about awesome. four or five people. Thank you. So for the rest of the people in attendance and for everybody listening in on the podcast, um, why don't you, since you wrote it as well as directed it, um, give a kind of you know plot synopsis as to as to what X Y is exactly about? Cool. Yeah. Well, it's it's a relationship drama that's set here in New York um, that basically follows four different friends as they're each trying to figure out um, some kind of you know major issue in their life. They're all struggling to to um, to connect in some way with either somebody else or with themselves. So it's kind of an investigation of modern day relationships and the struggles that we all face to, to find that like real authentic connection with someone, someone else. Now, can we go down the line? We have so many sure. people here. Uh, and have you each describe who you play in the film or, or what your role was on the production? Um, hi. Thanks for coming. I'm America Ferreira. Um, I play Sylvia in the film, and I'm also a producer on the film, and I'm also married to the director. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I'm also in the movie as well. He stars so, in it, yeah. Um, I play the role of Mark, who is in, who's in a relationship with Sylvia in the film. Hello, my name is John Paul Phillips, and I play the role of Jake, who is uh, sort of a redemptive best friend, if you will, of Mark. Um, my name is Kwesi, Co uh, really I'm not British, um, uh, I'm a producer on the movie and uh, I helped sort of bring I guess the financing and, and, and post-supervised, post-production supervised as well. Awesome. So Ryan, I interviewed you back at the Dallas Film Festival that's, yeah, that's right. for your directorial debut, The Dryland. Yeah. Can you talk, that film actually was about a, um, well why don't you describe what The sure, Dryland yeah, is about? Sure, yeah, The Dryland it was about um, a soldier coming back from the war in Iraq that was suffering from post-traumatic uh, post stress disorder. And um, that was my first film. And it was very much about one man's journey coming home and really getting in depth with the struggles that he faces to reconnect with people in his life and, and dealing with this traumatic event. And um, with XY, I, I kind of wanted to challenge myself in a different way. I wanted to tell a narrative that followed different stories and um, and interconnect them in a way that um, would would that that would allow me to build a broader picture of kind of modern day relationships. I mean, I knew that if I wanted to kind of dive into what it's like to be in relationships for this generation, I couldn't just tell it through one person's perspective. So I I I, I built four different characters who are quite different, and they're each dealing with different um, issues in their life. But what I hope that we achieved is that each of the four stories kind of build an overall narrative that takes you on a journey and connects you um, in some way. So in, in the kind of like the, the, the undercurrent of the film, I, I, I think is similar to The Dry Land in that it's, you know, it's really investigating this, this kind of human condition of connectivity and connection, but it's this X, Y is told in four different stories, so. And as you said, um, you and America play a couple at the outset of the film who uh, kind of experience a little turmoil over the course of the film or actually over the course of the first five minutes of the film. Um, did you write the part for America or how did that all happen? You know, it's funny because I, I didn't actually write it for her. I, I wrote it and then I thought, um, I didn't know. She's a pretty tough character. You know, yeah. she has a lot of qualities about her that that might be hard to digest so when i showed it to america i didn't think she would want to play it necessarily but i i did want her to come on as an, uh, a producer to help me develop the story and so over the course of developing it with each other i think you fell in love with the character but she was she played a big part in strengthening that role and adding depth to it which ended up getting it to a place where i think she wanted to play the part yeah yeah but no i didn't 
I, I didn't really have anybody in mind when I wrote it um, other than our friend Amber Tamblin, who I really wanted to work with, and so I wrote a role that I thought she might be interested in playing. But The drunk friend. The drunk friend. <laughs> <laughs> Which she is not like Amber. Beautiful. I mean, I just... <laughs> I feel bad saying that. It's not inspired <laughs> by her. It's just something I really wanted her to play. Yeah. But the funny, I, and maybe I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the casting. I mean, the cast came together in a very organic way. You know, JP is one of my best friends. And so um, after I wrote it, I thought, oh, that, that could be interesting if he played that role. And, um, and then Melanie Diaz, who plays America's best friend in the movie, she's a good friend of ours. And, and I reached out to her. She, and, and, she really liked it. So we, we kind of cast it with people that we knew and we had a lot of folks that, that became a part of the film that already had built in relationships like Maria Dizia and Adam Rapp play um, a couple in the movie and they've been friends for forever. And so we knew that if we were going to make a movie on a short schedule under extremely intense kind of circumstances that, that it, it would be very helpful if we had people that were not only game to really dive in and 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 shoot this in a down and dirty way but also that would have this those built-in relationships so that it we it would make my job as a director a little bit easier yeah so america were you game from the get-go after initially reading the screenplay because your character i mean you make her so empathetic and you bring such humanity to her but you know she's a hard to to root for character just based on her actions and you know what she does over the course of the film did you love her right off the bat no. No. <laughs> my first thought was, I hope this isn't based on me. <laughs> because this is not how I see myself. Um, I, think that, I think that when I first read the script, um, I did think that Sylvia was the least empathetic character. That she was the hardest to understand. Um, and I would say that I, I, didn't, I didn't really like her. And I, as a producer and as a creative partner to Ryan challenged him to explain to me you know what I'm supposed to like about this character and Ryan will say he wrote all these characters from a place of love which I did feel for a lot of the characters but not for Sylvia and and it wasn't that he hadn't done his job it's just that I couldn't see past my biases and judgment of her behavior to really like her yet and I thought as an actor you know as, as it went on I realized that the role, the job is really the actors to, to dive below the behavior, below the actions, and bring the emotional life to the surface so that the audience can feel torn and conflicted about a character who's behaving in an unlikable way, and yet you're somehow rooting for them. And that was the goal, you know? And so thank you for what, you're, what you just said. That's a wonderful compliment. Because I think for all of us as actors and for Ryan as a, the writer, director, the holder of the vision, it, the hope was that the audience would love these characters despite their flaws. And, and they had many. You made her relatable because, you know, we're all flawed as individuals. So beautiful job. Um, so we're going to be watching a clip from the film, uh, hopefully showcasing uh, your performance that we were just speaking of. That's a little intense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I guess with that, I have to ask, like, as a, as a married couple, I mean, what was it like to, to act those scenes out and to, uh, to go through that together? Yeah, you know, it was intense. It was very intense. Um, it was really intense. I think that what, you know, making any film, especially if it's traumatic, is an intense experience. For us, I think what was great about the experience was that, you know, we both, we, we know each other so intimately and we know each other's strengths, we know each other's weaknesses, but ultimately we really want to support each other and push each other to be the, our best selves, you know? And so I think when you're working with somebody who is that creative partner as well as a life partner, um, it, it can be an intense experience, but at the end of the day, you know that they have your back. And so for us, it was it was challenging, but it was it was a, it turned out to be a very beautiful experience, um, and I think we were allo allowed allowed ourselves to go much deeper than we probably would have with anybody else because we just have that relationship to fall on, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I would say that even though on camera what you see is quite um, there's a lot of turmoil there. Uh, I think 
really just to get through the filming, we needed each other more than ever. We really had to band together just to get through the day, you know, just to, from, you know, being, uh, you know, watching the monitor when he was in front of the camera to to uh, getting him a green juice because he hadn't eaten in, you know, 12 hours to being there as an actor for him, helping him sink into the scene when he had six different hats to wear. We needed each other. And um, so it really, in a weird way, stra strengthened our, our partnership through the film. Now, this scene takes place af uh, after an, a sex scene that opens the film between the two of you. Now, I have to ask, as a couple, I mean, what is it like being so intimate on screen together. <laughs> yeah, that was, I mean, it was, it was fine for us, you know, we were married, so obviously we've had sex before, well, yeah. you know, I mean, <laughs> it's a given. Um, I, I mean, I would hope, um, but not always. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't say how much sex we have, just that we've had it. This but is going in really personal, sorry. personal, personal territory. Bring it there. Can so, and we did not have sex for the movie. I mean, it was it was staged. Yeah, this is not an infomaniac. No, it's no. not a porn. Actually, when I first told my mom about the movie, she uh, I, and I said, "Mom, there's a lot of sex in the film. I'm not sure if you actually want to see it." And she's like, "Ryan, did you make a porn?" And I'm like. No, I didn't make a porn, Mom. Triple X, um, Y. But, um, no, but I mean, uh, it, was, it, it was awkward, but what, what I thought, you know, um, I try to make it n not as awkward as possible. And this might sound co counterintuitive to that, but, you know, the first day I, I decided we'd shoot this scene, the, the opening scene first, in which we're having sex. And I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to be naked on set and just walk around naked for a while and like get the crew used to me being naked because I'm going to be naked a lot on the on the film. So yeah, that's not the only scene. No, there's no. other scenes. But and and after 5 minutes people didn't really care anymore. And so um when we shot the scene it was it was pretty pretty relaxed actually. Um Did I, the other actors follow suit for their scenes. Uh what? well Jake had a, a a scene as well or yeah. JP had a scene that he had to be naked in as well. Um but, but, you know, I, I felt like let's just bring the crew together and set a tone where it's going to this is I wanted to say to them with my actions, like this is how it's going to be. And it's going to be intimate. It's going to be raw. It's going to be we're going to go to some really deep places. Um, and I r hope that they would be able to hold the space for us and really drop into what we were trying to make. And I think we succeeded at doing that. I mean, we had an amazing crew that really supported us throughout it all. But it is awkward. I mean, sex scenes are awkward, you know? And directing sex scenes of your partner with yeah, other men, very I imagine, is not easy. It's not easy, yeah. no. Do you want to speak to that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did a good job. I mean, I think in the best of... I, I, there's never... It's like jumping in cold water. You just got to... Whether it's with someone you know well, whether it's someone you've never met before, whether it's with another woman, whether it's with a man... It's not comfortable to have intimate physical scenes uh, with people standing around watching you and a camera pointed in your direction. That's, uh, it's not easy. Um, so you just sort of jump in and you have that initial shock of this is kind of weird and I want to run. But then you stay in it and, and you can make it about what the, what the goal of the scene is. You know, the, the hope is that this is not a movie about sex, you know, that you don't come away from this film saying, you know, oh, they made a movie about sex. All of these characters, sex scenes are conduits to their emotional life and, and that the true intimacy between the characters is when they can stay present enough not to take their clothes off <laughs> and yeah, talk to one yeah. another. Yeah. I think yeah. it was facilitated somewhat by uh, the, the sort of the trust that we had really uh, in doing those scenes, and I know certainly when Ryan and I were briefly involved, um, Kwesi and, and uh, America were there to, to sort of guide, guide us through it. So there was always eyes watching. Um, and so, so with that, I think it was not easy, like you said, but, but certainly manageable. Yeah. I, when he says briefly involved, we have a sex scene as well. Um, I didn't want to bring that up because it's kind of a spoiler. It is a little bit of a spoiler, but yeah. I think it'll probably. We've been talking about it already, yeah. but um, and it's it's that scene's really about um, 
a deep connection that uh, between two broken people who are trying to heal each other in some way. For me, that's how I see it. But, um, you know, we, when we were preparing for that, we really talked a lot about it. And it's not something that we took lightly. I mean, it's, it's, it's an intense experience. But ultimately, we, we brought, um, we had a lot of trust for each other and had a safe, a safe place. Like I said, again, with America and Quasi kind of being there to kind of make sure that when we were going into that space that we would feel protected and able to do our job. But it was hard. It yeah. was hard, yeah. I have to ask, you play a writer in the film, screenwriter. Yeah. Is this film at all autobiographical or is it completely fictional? No, it's it, it's completely fictional. It's not about my life, but it is inspired by a lot of lives of people around me. And, um, and you know, some of the emotional journey of the characters, I would say, is definitely close to my emotional journey. Um, of just trying to figure out, you know, how to be more of a, an expressive person and, and connect with people. I think that we all can relate to that struggle. So I, I, it's not based on any true events, but it is definitely inspired kind of by my self um, reflection, you know, and then my imagination, you know. And we have another clip from the film that we're going to show. So now, Ryan, I saw you at the premiere last night. You were there watching the film. Did you watch the film uh, again? Uh, no, I saw it the first two screenings, and then my nerves couldn't take it anymore. Yeah. As actors, I mean, do you, do you like watching your own work? Do you hate it? Do you do it often? Um, I, I mean, for, uh, for speaking for myself, I, I think it varies. I don't know. I, I think I've become more comfortable watching the work, and yeah. often I feel like if I've succeeded, Seeded in what I meant to do, dropping into a character and and kind of living in it, then the fact that I can watch myself, I think, is a marker of success. If I feel like I didn't succeed in dropping in and I'm just sort of schmacting, then I can't watch myself. But, you know, it's it's hard. I, I enjoy watching the film several times because you get to catch things that you didn't catch the first time or the second time. Um, and it's truly an ensemble film. And it's an ensemble film. So, you know, the first time around, you're too nervous to, to really sink in and see what's there. So it's fun to watch it a couple times. But watching it with an audience, even if they're responding positively, is still such a nerve-wracking experience. So That's I put myself idea. through it twice, and I think I'm done <laughs> watching it with an audience. What do you, JP, for you, how is it? Well, I think that I don't need to, to, to watch anything during the process. I think that's, that's something that you have to give yourself up to and, you know, trust that your director, Ryan, in, in, this, uh, in this case, is, is taking care of everything and really there's nothing for me to, for me to, to watch. But the final product is certainly something. I mean, we really hadn't seen that much during the process that he was making it. And so it's nice to watch it because it's nice to see what he's done with what we all gave to him. And so, you know, that's just, that, you know, there's a huge sense of pride with that. But, but certainly during the process, no, absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, yeah, unless someone actually is demanding you to see it for, you know, because you're not doing a good job, which hopefully never has to be done. <laughs> yeah. For me, it's, it's, I mean, I had to be a part of the editing process. Well, yeah, I was going to ask was, you about <laughs> that. How do you go about directing yourself? And it, it's crazy. That, I so. mean, you know, the, the way I go about it is I, I just prepare um, as if I was only going to be the actor, and then I prepare as if I'm only going to be the director and writer and so on and so forth. But, and, and, and in doing that, I come to set immensely prepared and try and let let it go so I'm not thinking about it obviously but but I have to also make a conscious decision in, in a moment all right right now I'm going to be the actor in this scene I'm going to be present for the other person and I'm not going to watch their performance I'm going to try and give whatever I can over and then you, you then I stop walk off and put the hat of the director on and think about like either watch playback or talk to our producers or whatever I have to do to get some kind of perspective and then dip back in and do the acting. And it's incredibly challenging because you're constantly bouncing back and forth between several different jobs and different hats. Um, for me, it was incredibly difficult because it's a, it's a pretty intense 
emotional journey that my character has to go on. And so there would be times where I'd be in the scene and I would just be completely lost, like lost in the scene. And really, I had to re rely on, you know, someone like America to be there at my side and say, OK, well, that was, you know, good or bad or you maybe try it like this or try it like that. So so she was really there to help kind of give me some insight. Um, and then there's always like um, just knowing that you can play different intentions as an actor that will then have the other actor um, respond in a different way. So you might be in a scene and try something different with a different intention that will yield a different performance from the other actor. And that's also another way to kind of control the direction, if you will. So I did that a lot as well. But um, it was challenging. It was incredibly challenging. And then the editing process is crazy. Like, I hate watching myself. So to sit oh, there wow. for months, <laughs> it's like torture. It's like yeah. Chinese water torture. Like you sit there and just stare at yourself and with an editor in the room and you just want to shoot yourself because well, you chose the right takes. I gotta say, so. I mean, I tried. You know, <laughs> I tried, but I was fortunate enough to have four different editors, and not um, none of them got fired or quit. But it was, um, it was that they could only each give a certain amount of time, which for me I think was in, an incredible process because each editor came on board with a new perspective, and so I was able to engage in a different dialogue and see the movie through four different eyes, um, which helped me a lot. You know. So at the end of the day, I think to answer that question, it really came down to having an amazing team around me of people that could support me and help um, realize the vision. Like, and Quasi was there, you know, on set as well. Um, you know, in, it, it, in making a directing, scenes. making a film uh, in itself is such a difficult task. But I mean, you're kind of being modest about the, the literally this splitting your head in so many different departments of the film, and then you're the writer, you know, you're thinking about the words, not of just your character, but every other character that's in the scene, and maybe even the scene that's going to be shot tomorrow, or the scene that was shot two days ago, that you're thinking, oh, maybe I, that was the wrong method, you know, whatever. But, um, but, uh, um, and then having your wife on set, too, uh, you know, that, that can be, for most people, pretty yeah. stressful. Yeah. <laughs> it w it but you guys, I mean, you have a professional relationship. And it's Are you going to stand up for me? <laughs> I, I am waiting for him to finish digging, no, I'm, I'm, digging I'm, the hole. I'm done. But <laughs> no, no, I mean, bit. for us, like I said before, it's, you know, our we actually met working together on a short film that I directed, and we worked on the dry land together, and, and now and we've made this now together. And, you know, our relationship, our personal relationship is very separate from work. Um, you know, a lot of times conversations spill over, obviously, but we, we love working with each other. Well, how do you keep it separate on set, though? You, you, I mean, you're in work mode, you know? Did you have a conversation, you know, in the car before going to no, set? No, I mean, when you're, when you're actually shooting, yeah. you, you, we couldn't. I mean, we, the, all the scenes in our apartment, not in our personal apartment, but the, the apartment in the movie, um, we were also sleeping there at night, you know, while we were shooting. So... You, we, out of necessity. Out of necessity. We seriously like nice apartment. It was a beautiful apartment. We yes. kicked our friends out of their apartment and then and had them let stay them in stay in our apartment. <laughs> and so at the end of the night or at five in the morning, the crew would go home and Ryan and I would plop into the bed that we'd been shooting yeah. in all day and go to sleep and wake up on set with cameras and yeah. lights and it was crazy. So you're really living the lives of these two characters. It's, yeah. it sounds pretty method to me. It was pretty. Me it was pretty method. Yeah. But I would say, but, but, but method would say, out of necessity. Yeah, not well, like, yeah. method out of necessity. But I actually would have liked to, even if we didn't have to do that, I would still like to work in that way. I, I, I approach it in a very kind of method way. But I think what I was trying to answer was that, you know, when you're shooting, it's very hard to separate the two, personal and work, because you, you shoot all day, you come home, you prepare for the next day, you sleep three hours, you get up, you do it again, you know? And so, so there was, during the, the, the production process, it's all work and personal, it gets very messy. But then when, when you're in post or when you're writing it, it's a lot easier to kind of um, separate the two. Yeah. So. Uh, so we're going to watch one last clip from the film, and then we're going to open up to questions for the audience. I'm sure you all have some great questions. So someone's going to be coming around with a mic, so just put your hand up, and, and they'll bring a mic to you. So um, what have you learned in the time between, well, obviously you've learned a lot of things, but what have you learned in the time between doing Dryland and this in terms of uh, how you approach the directing and America? How did you, what did you learn in terms of how you work together? Were there things that you did then that you've learned 
do do differently that you two maybe found in sync? That's a that's a good question. Um, you know, I with the dry land, I was very much. I came from it, came from like just out of film school. Um, I had a, you know, I think there was a sense of um, there was a lot of pressure being my first film to 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 do it right, you know. And so I overprepared, I mean, to kind of a crazy extent. I, you know, like would do my script. I wrote the script, then I would do a script analyst, like analyst as if I was an actor and think of every different intention the actor might come up with and think about how I could direct them in case they made that choice, you know, like just crazy preparation, Um, which was great because when I got on set, I just forgot all about it and just dropped in but I did have a very specific way I wanted the movie to look and each shot was very purposeful with XY I did all the same preparation but I decided that I was going to just let it all kind of go and you know I didn't have a, as tight of a hold on on the visuals I we that being said I, I think that it, XY is a much more visually pleasing film but I wanted it to be more fluid and so and to be able to allow for space for people to have happy accidents and, and really foster those kind of like magical moments. So I shot it in a, in a much more loose style and I kind of approached it in a much more loose way. Um, we shot over a hundred hours for this movie, you know, and I just would roll and roll and roll and, you know, we would try different shots and try different, you know, ways of doing each scene. And I just wanted it to be very, very loose. And, um, and it was a gr- it was a great experience, and I I think that 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 perspective came out of not only growing as a filmmaker but growing personally, and not feeling the need to kind of hold on so tight to everything. Um, I also paint. I'm a painter, and you know, in my painting, I I kind of I have a a, pro- a process that's very messy and and um, is very much about embracing mistakes. And I've been painting a lot, and so that kind of that investigating that process has really influenced the way that I, I make movies as well. Do you paint like John does in the film? Is that, is that your uh, style? Oh, no, that's a different style, but yeah. Naked. Naked. Although I did paint some of that, but yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, clearly you grow in relationships, in any relationship, whether you're producing partners or the longer you work together, the more you know about one another and you know how to better support them. I would say for me, it's been an incredible gift to watch this uh, process of directing a film, writing a film and getting it together and directing it. And then when everyone else walks away, you're stuck in the editing room, still living with it. And then you're fixing the sound and getting to be up close and personal and watching him through his process has, uh, has been a great gift for me. And what I would say is, as an actor, you know, I I feel you come in, you take what's been given to you and you make it your own as much as possible, and then you sort of walk away. And as a producer, your job isn't necessarily to make it your own. (laughs) Your job is to to really understand the vision of the director and to do what's necessary to create the environment in which that vision can can succeed and come to fruition. And and so as a producer, and Kwesi can speak to this too, I'm sure there are producers listening or producers here in the audience. The the for me the lesson was, you know, letting go of what I envisioned when I read the script or what I envisioned, you know, when we were casting, and know that my job was more to be supportive of of the director, of the person who is holding the vision for everyone else. So I think I've learned that from our process working together. Yeah, I, uh, there's so many different types of producers with so many different skill sets, and I think as a, a, a producer in the general general sense of the word, you're you know you're trying to fill in the gaps and try to share responsibilities and and the and the practice of what you do with the other producers on set, and even in the case of in some movies, the the director and and maybe even the actors. But um, yeah, so but you're you're absolutely you're you're correct. Hello, everyone. Um, my question's for America. My name's Paula, and I just have such an admiration in all the types of projects that you've picked. Uh, you don't just, I feel like you pick them for such uh, specific reasons, and I just want to know how you go about, as an actor and someone who is now producing, uh, how you go about selecting the types of projects that you work on. 
Um, well, thanks for the question. Um, you know, I think that it's, it's um, you know, there's not necessarily a checklist or rules that I approach a script with. I'm really just waiting to be moved by something, you know? I'm waiting to, 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 to have my interest peaked enough uh, where there are good questions to ask, you know, about a character, about a story. Um, you know, like this, this film here, for me, it was about you know, can we succeed in taking the more unlikable things about our generation that many people like to talk about and write about how lazy we are, how self-indulgent we are, how, you know, all of the things about the millennials and the y young kids these days, you know, but no one's really going deeper than that and saying, well, what's, it's not that we don't have emotional lives or that we have inner lives, it's that, you know, they're, they're, they're folk, the people who talk about the superficiality of our generations are also focusing on the superficialities of our generation and not going deeper than that and saying, how does that then affect the emotional life of a generation? So to me, what Ryan did with this script was something that I hadn't seen, you know, as an audience member. Uh, the, I hadn't seen a, a director or a writer approach our generation in that way with some sort of actual question and understanding... Uh, I'm sorry, a desire to understand versus just a comment. So that's for me is what hooked me to this film and I think it's different for every project and I'm just looking to, to, to be able to um, be challenged and, and, and when something feels new and fresh and like it hasn't been done before, that's always really exciting too. This question is from America. Hi, America. My name is Evan. How did you develop the voice for Astrid and How to Train a Dragon? And what is the sequel going to be like from your point of view? Hi, Evan. Thank you for the question. Um, the second movie's coming out. It's very good and very exciting. Um, I love playing Astrid. I think when we started, I mean, maybe eight years ago, shooting the first movie, uh, Astrid changed a lot and she was a little bit me and a little bit my fantasy of getting to finally play an animated character in a, in a big animated movie. So um, I would say there's a lot of me in Astrid. Hi, how long did it actually take to film this movie and how long were you two sleeping in your, uh, your set bed apart from outside of your own flat? <laughs> oh, um, it took 20, uh, some, 20 some days to shoot it. And we were in the set bed for, I think, four nights. So not a long time. But when you're shooting, it feels like a long time. <laughs> you know, four nights is a lot. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, no, it was, it, was an, it, it was a pretty intense process. I mean, we had... Um, limited resources and we had you know actor schedules to to consider and um all of the things that you know there were a lot of constraints and so we really had to push hard to 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 capture the film in a short amount of time but and that's why i think it it was really essential not only to have a, a crew that was willing to go on that ride with us but a cast that was like prepared that had built-in chemistry and were willing to do hair and makeup like in a dingy bar bathroom, you know, and not expect to have a trailer. So, so in a lot of ways, it was very stripped down. I mean, it was a really stripped down production and we, and yet we had such great talented people working with us that really believed in the project and wanted to be a part of it. And that's, that's the only way we could have done it. I mean, it, otherwise it would have been, the budget would have been way out of our control, you know? I'm just going to get one last question. Sure. So we have a lot of, you know, aspiring writers, directors, actors, producers who, who read IndieWire. And um, can we just go down the line and have you each kind of tell me how, how, how you think or how, how you got to where you are and whatever kind of advice you can offer to people that want to be in your shoes one day? Yeah, sure. I mean, for me, I think, you know, the most important thing is um, to be inquisitive, you know, ask questions and... Um, try and really uh, tap into your perspective of the world. Um, find life experience, like embrace experiences in life, em embrace knowledge about filmmaking, watch movies. Um, and along the journey, I think it's very important to treat your, yourself 
well in terms of like the way you eat and exercise and sleep because I think that's never really talked about but I think in order to dive deep and create you have to be coming from a a well-balanced place to go to these dark places and or these happy places so I would say like really treat yourself well um, and never give up because everyone's going to tell you no everyone will say no a million times for the one yes you get and so just be very strong in your vision and and don't take no for an answer ever so I would uh, add to that that don't ever expect it to be easy because even when you've had one success, it doesn't necessarily mean that the next thing you want to do is going to come to you easily. You have to constantly be proving yourself. And I think I learned this from watching Ryan do his work is he's not afraid of the work. He just wakes up in the morning and says, instead of sitting here being really upset that no one's responded to the script, what can I do today to get me closer to my vision? Whether that is making my cast, my dream cast board, or whether that's working on my, my lookbook, wh- whether that's you know, redoing the budget in another way. Watching him has taught me that you only learn by doing. So you can't sit around and wait for the perfect story to come to you or for someone to ask you to be involved in their project or for someone to discover you. You know, we all have something to say and what you have to say will never get said unless you just do it and not sit around and kind of wait for the perfect circumstance. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, and this this is not just from filmmaking, but, but... I have never kind of done anything or succeeded in anything if I haven't made a, a strong choice and sort of ran with it. Um, I think we can all can be kind of indecisive at times, even when you're trying to figure out where to go with your girlfriend to get dinner and no one wants to say yes or no, or we don't mind, like, say what you, what it is you want to do and follow through with it. And, and that goes horribly wrong sometimes, um, more often than not. And you always can learn from that. And I think in doing that, um, you only move forward. And it might, like you say, to, you might take 20 steps back before you take one big leap forward, but uh, that big leap really is kind of everything. So just follow your gut and stand by your, your word, you know, I would say. Um, I would say patience is probably a good one. Um, getting a film actually to the point where you're starting to shoot takes a it's treacherous. It's, it takes a long time. Um, sometimes it, uh, more times than not, it falls apart right before you proceed. And so that's that's definitely one thing. But but work. I think the biggest thing for me is, is work with your friends. Um, in in your in you know this career that we've chosen, I think that there's that opportunity to do that quite a bit. And um, I've certainly had the opportunity to choose to work with my friends, and you build friendships when you actually do the work. So. I think it's that's that's one of the things that I've learned. Yeah, I would echo what he says. I mean, you know, especially for young filmmakers, like find your friends that love to do what you are doing and start working with them. Band together and just make stuff, you know? And uh, we have a great filmmaking family amongst us. Um, and there's a lot of other people like our producer Jason Berman and my producer from the Dryland, Heather Ray, that we will constantly keep working with each other. It's and. Because it's a lifestyle, you know, it's like, it's not just a job, it becomes your life. And you want to work with people that you really love and also believe in, in what you're doing. So that's, that's so important. Yeah. And just one more thing, I would add, like, don't be afraid to fail. Like, yeah, don't, don't be, be afraid, afraid to, to make something bad, because you're probably going to make something bad before you learn how to make something good. And I think being afraid to fail stops a lot of us from taking that first step. Definitely. Just and 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 you know, like I would encourage you to fail. <laughs> You're probably going to learn a lot from it. I mean, don't set out to fail, obviously, <laughs> but 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 don't be afraid because we all fail time and time again. I mean, I probably failed a hundred times during this movie to get to a movie that actually I feel decent about showing to people. You know, so I think that really be op- learn from your failures and and grow and try and not make the same mistake twice. Also, oh, sorry. Sorry, just one thing, uh, just. I would say never try to come from a place of fear. I think that would be something prevalent just because you're then operating from sort of weakest point, which is really setting yourself up for a fall. So, um, I mean, it's, a, it's very, very hard to not come from a fearful place or act out of uh, fearful thoughts. So, so just as much as you can 
block that out. Can I, I'm just going to shout out to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to shout out to Jason Berman who was our lead and main producer of, for the movie, standing right over there. He was supposed to be on a plane right now, but he's he's always you know changing his flight schedule. So. Um, uh, he, he was so important to r making this movie happen. I mean, everybody plays a part and role, and it's all important, but he, you know, I've, this is my fifth movie to do with him, and, and I just can't say enough yeah, amazing Yeah, we met in film him. school, and that's what I'm talking about in terms of working with people that, you know, that are your friends and that you, you sense a good collaboration with. You know, we met in film school and have made three movies together now, actually four with my short film and and you 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 know you you become like a family you you love each other like a family you fight like a family but at the end of the day you know you want those creative partners that are going to help um achieve these impossible missions because every movie is like mission impossible to get it made so you want to have a good group around you well you should all be very very proud and thank you um, nigel thank you